principle of rhythm is the fifth principle of seven in total that may be used for self-mastery. This particular principle may be used to achieve balance, flow and heightened states of awareness during our earthly experience. My name is Jasmine and welcome to the seven hermetic principles series. See the description below to find links to the other episodes. The principle of rhythm. Everything flows out and in, everything has its tides, all things rise and fall, the pendulum swing manifests in everything, the cabalion. The word rhythm refers to recurring movement, symmetry or motion. Life in this plane is naturally rhythmic, there is flow and movement everywhere. We see it in sound, breath, ocean tides, we see it in the up and down motion of our moods, success, wealth and even the rise and fall of nations. Atoms make up all matter in this physical realm and they themselves manifest rhythm in their vibrations. We see rhythm in the cycles such as the rising and setting of the sun and the seasons, the 24 hour clock cycle and of course the cycle of life and death as we expand and then contract. The constant movement and change that is seen within rhythm reminds us nothing in the physical world lasts forever and we could say that this is written within the fabric of the physical world, perhaps because it is not a permanent dwelling place for the soul, rather it is a place to learn and then depart. Now as we learned in the previous law of polarity, all things exist with a polar opposite that are actually one and the same. So the hermetic principle of rhythm works by swinging like a pendulum back and forth between the two poles. So our fluctuating emotional experiences uh, are due to a backward and forward swing of the pendulum, which actually carries us from one polar experience to the opposite. The law of compensation. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates the cabalion. So in other words, a powerful swing to the left on the pendulum will eventually create a powerful swing to the right that is of the same degree. A person that experiences great suffering also has the capability of feeling great joy. A person that indulges in plenty of fun in life will also experience great boredom. And significant success will determine intense failure along the way as we roller coaster our way through life. The law of karma suggests that the swing of the pendulum may also be carried through lifetimes, with one life being significantly prosperous and the next full of hardship. How can we apply this principle? Awareness, acceptance and mental preparation. So through exploring the previous principles, we found that our mind creates our reality and therefore our belief systems that are in the mind also create our reality. However, we will be subjected to the principle of rhythm regardless of whether we believe it or not, simply because it is truth. The principle of rhythm is truth and the truth does not change. So it is destined to occur in our reality, almost like an algorithm that was programmed into this plane of existence. So in order to begin working with this principle, we need to learn to accept it, simply because it is an inevitable part of our temporary experience in the physical world. So our ability to actually flow through our earthly happenings is greatly influenced by the simple awareness and acceptance of this principle as it occurs within our inner and outer world. For example, in our outer experience, we fully know and accept that our failures will eventually swing through success. We know we may experience periods of intense outer chaos and then peace will follow. In our inner world, we swing through good moods and bad moods. Our mind may be calm one day and full of racing thoughts the next. We accept the introverted periods of our life and expect the extroverted periods to follow. There are times of learning and then times of integration. We know that we cannot always feel intensely passionate about our hobbies and projects every day and we accept all of this as it unfolds, simply by knowing that we are part of a rhythmic flow that permeates our existence. An understanding of the workings of this principle will give one the key to the mastery of these rhythmic swings of feeling and will enable him to know himself better and to avoid being carried away by these inflows and outflows, the Kabbalion.
So through this awareness and acceptance, we are actually obviously more mentally prepared for life's happenings. And all of this will generate uh, thoughts that are of a high vibration. They are, they are at a vibe of a vibration that is more desired, which will then in turn create our outer world accordingly. Through cultivating this general acceptance of life's inevitable ups and downs with this high vibrational attitude, then we actually gain this higher perspective of everything and we allow everything to unfold from this place of detachment. Um, so we allow emotions to unfold and we do not wallow in self-pity, we do not feel doomed. This too shall pass. Knowing everything to be a temporary occurrence, we do not get attached to any experience as it occurs, and this alleviates much of our suffering since unnecessary attachment is the heart of our suffering. The mental law of neutralization. Rhythm may be neutralized by an application of the art of polarization, the Kabbalion. So though the principle of rhythm is a law that governs this time-space reality, it may be escaped as we avoid being carried along with it according to the law of neutralization. So this is where our self-mastery really comes into play. There are many planes of causation and one may use the laws of the higher to overcome the laws of the lower, the Kabbalion. Now there are two poles within our personal mental plane, the higher and the lower consciousness, otherwise known as the ego or the higher self. So as discussed in the previous principle, we may choose which pole we wish to reside at through polarization. Now using will, the master may choose to polarize themselves at the level of the higher consciousness. So as we climb up the planes of existence, there is an absence of duality and therefore the law of rhythm does not manifest. So the law of neutralization raises our mental vibrations above the lower plane of consciousness. And as a result, we dwell in the higher plane and the pendulum swings beneath us, which is pretty cool. All individuals who have attained any degree of self-mastery accomplish this more or less unknowingly. And by refusing to allow their moods and negative mental states to affect them, they apply the law of neutralization. The master, however, carries this to a much higher degree of proficiency and by the use of his will, he attains a degree of poise and mental firmness, almost impossible possible of belief on the part of those who allow themselves to be swung backward and forward by the mental pendulum of moods and feelings, the Kabbalion. Now the individual that has mastered the mind is unaffected by the mind's happenings simply because it is they are deeply aware that thoughts can be observed and they do not represent truth, they are just voices in the mind. So they further hold the knowing that emotion is just sensation as well within the body. It's just energy and motion. Now, through the abil ability to actually observe these thoughts and these emotions, the master realizes that they are not them. They realize that they are not this voice in the head. And it is actually through this kind of self-awareness and through this dis disidentification from thoughts that the individual is not lost in the illusion uh, of the physical experience. And actually from their elevated perspective, they can see the bigger picture. For example, say there is a situation that may trigger an angry reactive response in the individual that resides in the lower plane of consciousness. Yet the individual that stands at the higher plane in the same situation is totally aware of his thoughts and remains conscious of his inner world, ultimately transcending an emotional reaction. And though the swing of the pendulum is in operation, through his ability to disidentify, he remains unaffected. For more information on this, it's actually really beneficial to explore the teachings of the East. Um, so Buddhist or Taoist philosophies are actually really helpful in really cultivating this um, higher consciousness. So you can also check out my videos titled Cultivating the Witness Talks. This principle really acts as a huge catalyst to raise our vibration and alchemize our mind, ultimately creating so much freedom within our life, so much freedom from the attachment that again creates our suffering. 
so we're able to kind of glide and flow through our life with more ease. So it is also through this kind of mental alchemy that we truly awaken to what we are beyond the voice in our mind and we bring the peace and the balance and the unity of the higher planes into our physical experience. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name's Jasmine. If you found this video helpful, please comment, like, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye-bye-bye.